The following program is brought to you by Whiteman TV. All content in the Stay Strong, Live Long Falls Prevention Education Series has been created for informational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health care provider with any questions you have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have heard on this television production. Welcome to our Stay Strong Live Long education series on falls prevention brought to you by the VON, the Upper Grand Family Health Team and our community partners as well. Falling is the leading cause of injury-related death among seniors and the number one contributor to loss of independent living. In fact, one in three seniors, 65 and older, will fall each year and falling just once doubles your chance of falling again. It is our hope that through this Whiteman Telecom production that we can change these statistics in Wellington County empowering our community with the tools and the knowledge they need to prevent future falls. So today's session includes the topic of arthritis and it's brought to you today by a physiotherapist from the Arthritis Society, Susan McCoslin. And take it away, Susan. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you to the organizers for uh, allowing me to be part of this um, very interesting and exciting series. The uh, topic of falls is very um, close to our hearts as physiotherapists because we meet a lot of people who suffer a fall. Uh, I'm from the Arthritis Society, as Julie was saying, and um, as, as, a, as a member of the Arthritis Society, I work with three of their missions, trying to find a cure of course for arthritis and believe me they're getting closer all the time. Making access to care easier and easier for people. I guess the bottom line is that as a physiotherapist with the Arthritis Society if you have arthritis we would like to meet you because there are lots of things we can do to help. And then we try to be out in the community I guess this would be something like that trying to reach out to everyone. Now, if we think of arthritis and falling, right off the top, one thing I've learned from anyone who has fallen is that it's a terrible shock to the system. It takes a long time to recover, and adults with arthritis have a higher chance of falling and suffering an injury from that fall. Having arthritis seems to increase the chance of falling by two to four times. And as Julie mentioned, falling once means there's twice the chance of falling again. So sometimes we come to a subject and we think, is there anything that we can find humorous about the topic? And I would say, that when it comes to falling, there are no humorous parts to that subject. As a physiotherapist working with arthritis, I can tell you that there are over 100 different kinds of arthritis. But there are two main kinds of arthritis that you may have heard of. First is osteoarthritis, and the second is rheumatoid arthritis. If you're over the age of 50, there's a one in five chance that you have some osteoarthritis. If you're in a, a, a room of 100 people, that means you're certainly not alone. One in five. Rheumatoid arthritis is this probably the second most prevalent kind, and in the general population, one in 100 people. So if we think of the size of Fergus, a lot of people are struggling with arthritis. Osteoarthritis is different in that, from rheumatoid in that it's a, a disease of the cartilage in the joint. 
where the lining, which is the cartilage, is wearing away, and many factors can contribute to that, but certainly age factors in. Rheumatoid arthritis is called an autoimmune disease where the body has decided, for still a mysterious reason, to attack itself. And in that case, the target of the arthritis is the another lining of the joint called synovium. And the reaction there, instead of wearing down, it becomes very swollen. So what we're saying is that people with the most prevalent forms of arthritis struggle with damage in the joint as well as swelling and inflammation. And this is just to help me remember that I think I touched on the points I was going to say, uh, except that it does, uh, it, it, there is evidence that having arthritis increases the risk of falling if, if you have ar arthritis. So what is it? Some people don't know what the word arthritis means, but arth is joint and itis is inflammation. Arthritis is inflammation in your joints. Some people uh, that I talk to say, Arthur is acting up today. <laughs> we have a little picture here that, that you can see on the screen just to show where these tissues are that become involved with the two main forms of arthritis. The inflamed joint is, is struggling with that fiery red color on the lining of the, uh, it's called the synovium, and that becomes swollen. A joint is a closed space, so if something in the joint is causing swelling, it's pushing out against tissues that don't move and don't stretch. So it's very, very painful. The other joint is struggling more with damage, and that's where the cartilage, which is at the end of every bone in our body, where it comes to meet another bone and form a joint, that is wearing down. Cartilage doesn't have any feeling in it, so as long as the cartilage is there, your bones will never touch. But when the cartilage wears down, the bones can get closer and closer together, and if they actually get close enough, the pain is described as unbelievable. Then, what are the risk factors? if someone has arthritis. And we've made a list here, and we'll try to address each of these as we go along. But muscle weakness, diminished proprioception, gait and balance problems, pain is a huge issue, medications, foot pain and footwear, Fear of falling again. Environmental hazards. Moving too quickly. Posture. And some other health factors that contribute as well. If we look at the first, muscle weakness. Muscles are the protection for our joints. In order for our joints to have that protection, the muscles must stay strong and they must stay balanced. If you have a muscle on the back of your knee that's working strong and the muscle on the front is not, that leads to a real imbalance and things can happen where uh, muscles become weak and they cannot hold the joint and protect it from injury. This applies with arthritis to the muscles in our legs and our back. We want to keep those strong. If a person has weakness because of arthritis around their hips or their knees or their ankles, problems like buckling of the knee can happen. And many people talk, talk to us about that, their knees buckling. 
Since the knee is one of the largest joints in the body and it's one of the main ones supporting you, if it buckles, down you, down you could go. Proprioception is a very long word, but it's the body's ability to tell you where your arms and legs are in space. And if your proprioceptive system is working properly, you will feel very steady on your feet. But many of the sensation fibers that tell you about proprioception are in your joints. And I was, I was testing this just the other day, doing a, a test on myself. I put one foot in front of the other and thought, this was really easy the last time I tried it. And I, I thought, wow, my ankle muscles are working like crazy because they were trying to keep me upright. If your muscles around your joint are not working in complete balance and telling you uh, properly the sensation in the joint, then you could, you could lose your balance and fall. So proprioception is necessary in order to have safe movement of your limbs. With arthritis, there could be mechanical damage in the joint from the cartilage wearing down. There could be swelling because of inflammation. All of these things can throw off your normal proprioception sense and make you feel unsteady and unsure on your feet. If the proprioception then is reduced in your lower limbs, that could lead to a chance of falling. I mentioned joint replacements because so many people have, have said to me they may have had their knee replaced and for some reason that they don't understand, balance. They had gotten used to the sensation they had in their arthritic knee and that knee was replaced. By all means, the pain is gone. The people say the pain of the surgery is nothing like the pain of the arthritis. But there's something making them feel off balance. And that's because the normal fibers that used to send the information to the brain telling them where their knee was in space are interrupted because the old cartilage is gone and the new components of a joint are in their knee. So we, we have to pay attention to this and I believe this is an area where when we're doing exercises after a, a knee replacement we need to spend more time talking about balance. Now walking, gait and balance problems. Muscle weakness that we talked about and the balance in the joint and sensation telling you where you are, proprioception, that keeps us in line when we're walking. If we don't have the proper sensation in our joint, we might sway too far one direction. And if we sway far enough, we will not be able to get back and that could result in a fall. Balance can be thrown off. If one leg is hurting because there's, there's pain in the knee or in the hip, there's a natural, natural tendency to move away from that pain and compensate by putting weight mostly on the other leg. This can change the pattern of your walking and, and cause an unusual sway and possibly result in a fall. It's good to be aware of all these things. I'm thinking as we go along that perhaps people can relate to something in their own life that may have resulted in a fall and think, ah, Oh, that's what it was. My knee buckled. Or, yes, I, it was so hard to walk. I know I was moving way off to one side. And, but, but then 
why did I fall? And so we're trying to explain why that might have happened. Anyone with arthritis will tell you that the pain is beyond. And the pain can be very difficult to manage with arthritis. But muscle pain and joint swelling can make it difficult to move properly. It makes it difficult to move the joint properly. And stiffness, many people with arthritis talk about stiffness in their joints. If, you're, if your joints can't move properly, like your hip and your knee, then the muscles will quickly become out of balance. And we talked about muscles being out of balance. Most people I know who have arthritis do take medications and depending on the, the struggles that that person is having, the medications may be prescribed for pain, they might be prescribed to help sleep, they may be prescribed to help with mood. And any of these medications could have an effect on your, your tiredness, your alertness, um, and could, could contribute to a fall. Foot pain and footwear, the, the part of your body that touches the ground, your feet, take tremendous strain through them in a lifetime. Tremendous. People have done studies to try and determine how many thousands and thousands of pounds we put through our tiny feet in a lifetime. Pain in the feet and arthritis in the feet changes the appearance of the feet and also the pain can make it hard to step properly. If someone has, is developing a bunion, most people know what a bunion on the big toe, that usually leads to a change in the direction of the big toe and when we're walking Normally, we need to step over that big toe to go on to our following step. If that toe isn't in the right place, it can be really difficult to step forward. And that could alter the pattern of your walking and throw off your balance. Feet, we all know probably, except a couple of exceptions here, feet get wider regardless of what we do and feet get thicker regardless of what we do. Factor in arthritis and if you if you have any changes in your feet you'll know that that it can be um, difficult to find footwear. A lot of people that I meet try to get around that extra width of their feet by buying a shoe that's long. And I, I saw it just yesterday. I couldn't believe my eyes. I, I, the, the person was where it was, had a size eight foot and the shoe was size 11. And, and they said, this is the only way that I can wear shoes because to get the longer shoe meant that it was a wider shoe and therefore their foot. But they, they walked with either their foot way back at the heel and all that open shoe at the toe or as they walked they found their foot went into the front of the shoe and their heel was sliding out all over the place. Imagine what a tripping hazard this could be and this has been reported to me. The shoes got in the way. I thought it might be good to show you a little picture of what your foot looks like and I find it just blows me away that our tiny foot has 28 bones. 28 bones, two arches, 19 muscles and 107 ligaments. And on that tiny foot we jump, we run, we go through a phase in life where we think high heels are the answer. It turns out that high heels, high heels to a foot doctor are, they refer to it like something like a death sentence for the toes. 
But it's fascinating to know that we are putting all of our weight through these tiny, tiny parts of our body. This is just a little slide to show what you might be looking for generally in a shoe. A firm sole, a shoe that's wide enough across your toes. There is a little trick to knowing that that is fairly new to me, but most other people may know about it. If you take your shoes off and you put your shoe along the bottom of your foot, you would have to put your, your right shoe along the bottom of your left foot. And you can see whether your foot is hanging over the edge. Because if it is, that, that shoe is not wide enough for your foot. It has to be wide enough. It also has to be deep enough because with arthritis, some of the, arch, the bones in our arch fall down. And when they fall down, our toes rise up. And that makes the foot deeper and the need to have a shoe with a deeper box in the toe. Also, they should have a material that will, that will be very comforting on your foot. Leather is a nice material and uh, there shouldn't be very many seams. Uh, many shoes are made with a seam that seems to go right across that bunion. And you know the minute you put it on that that shoe is staying on the shelf. This is a huge problem now. If, if anyone has experienced a fall, it takes a long time to recover. And if there was an injury from that fall, the recovery is even longer. It, it, it's partly fear. Fear is a huge part. Because of the experience of falling, the shock, the suddenness of it, the unexpected, uh, the unexpected event, and it's over before you know it, and, 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 and can you get up, and, and if you couldn't before, will you be able to get up again? It's horrifying. It really is horrifying. Fear of falling, though, if, if someone is experiencing that, it's very important to address it because when people are afraid, it's natural, but their activity level really starts to fade. Because of the fear, it's difficult to stay moving around. And muscles could become weak, and it becomes like an avalanche effect on the person. Your stamina will suffer, um, pain will get worse, more and more difficult to keep moving. And this can be a horrible risk for falling again. So we, we need to address whether or not a person has a fear of falling. Now, environmental hazards, you've probably all heard these. Um, I was noticing even last night all the electrical cords I have going across the wrong places. But some of these you will know about. Lighting that isn't bright enough to light the area where you're walking. Trouble on stairs, especially if the stairs don't have a railing. How many people do you know who have used the towel rack in the bathroom as a grab bar? Low toilets. If you feel like you're having a free fall to your toilet, then it's time to think of changing the toilet height. Bathtubs. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Mats that slip when they're on the floor. And I think when I look back at this slide, I should have just said, bathrooms are a danger zone. Everything is cold, hard, sharp, wet, and, and slippery. So bathrooms are an important area for us to address. Have you ever had the phone ring and your immediate reaction is get to the phone, but it's across the way? and you're moving and all of a sudden oh, you might trip and fall. Has your doorbell ever rung? It depends on the, the sound the doorbell makes, but mine is like a gong. And, and the sound of it gets, gets the adrenaline going and, and then ready to move. But have you also noticed at all that you, you can't do that? 
you, your, your body when you have arthritis, your mind is fine. Get there, get the phone, get the doorbell. But the arthritis and the proprioception and your muscles in your legs don't get that same message. And that can be a risk for falling. I have met so many people who learned about portable phones after they fell. Posture. Posture is a huge problem, and this is where a lot of people start to sit up straight. <laughs> because posture can be altered by many factors, but definitely arthritis in your neck, arthritis in your back, arthritis in your knees, all, oh, and hips can contribute to altered posture. The, the main thing is that when we change our posture, and it, it, it's not our fault that this happens, the muscles get out of balance. And instead of you putting your weight through the proper part of your foot, the middle part of your foot, your weight may start to move through the front part of your foot. If you're tired, if you're weak, we also start to change our posture. I'm sure, I know I slouch, I know most people I know, when they're tired, slouch. Factor arthritis into the picture and slouching becomes almost part of the shape of the arthritis. So the result generally is a tendency to stoop forward. And that altered posture when you're standing can throw off your balance. The other health factors that I was just going to mention, uh, this can be for anyone, not just arthritis, but memory. Um, urgency, the, the need, that, that feeling that you must get to the bathroom. Uh, your nutrition, if you're not eating all the right food, you, you're not going to have the best energy. And I mentioned loneliness because there is a lot of research going on even as we speak about loneliness, the importance of addressing it, and trying to avoid being lonely. Because all kinds of health problems start to get worse if we're lonely. Now we've listed and gone through a little bit of what, the, what we see as the risk factors, and um, maybe you, you can relate to some of those in your own life. But what if you, you heard one of those risk factors and thought, okay, that's why I fell. So we believe it's, it's nice to be aware of the risks and try, if you can, to apply them to yourself. So, for instance, if you find that you're walking around your home and going down the hall and you're just lightly touching the walls along the way, that's an indication that you're you want to know there's something there to fall against if you or lean against. Are you walking through your house and you're lightly touching furniture? Or you've placed furniture in places where otherwise you'd be walking out in an open area? Are you having a free fall when you go to the toilet? You get to a certain point and then I sure hope it's there when I land. That's a sign of muscle weakness. Are your knees buckling sometimes when you're walking along? Are your knees bent and will not straighten out because they have arthritis? That's a common problem and we can address that with exercise. But if you're walking with your knees bent, your muscles are working so much harder than they would be if your knees would go out straight. I just knew that I had a lot of writing on these slides so I wanted to find a picture. And this is just a picture of two people standing with their feet together and they appear to have pretty good balance. The, there are some tests for balance and I don't know if some of you have had any of these tests but uh, you can even try them on yourself if you're, you have to be a bit careful, be near something you can hang on to. But the chair raise test, I don't know if anybody's ever experienced that. It's a test for muscle strength. And, and you would be sitting in a chair and ideally not using the armrests. 
Stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, five times, if possible. And someone would measure how long that took you. If you have good health and there aren't too many other issues, 10 seconds might, might be your time. If it's taking longer than that, and longer and longer, that becomes more of a risk for falling. The timed up and go is another test where a person is asked to stand up from the chair, walk five, three or five meters, turn, go back, and sit down. And this is a test as well for mobility and balance and strength. And the time it takes to do that is measured and, and then decided whether there's a risk for falls. Tandem. Tandem stance is the one I was trying on myself when I couldn't, it was hard. But tandem stance is uh, standing with your feet side by side and just keeping your balance. Ideally, a true tandem would be with your feet touching. So the balance test would be to try and stand with your feet side by side for 10 seconds. Then try to stand semi-tandem with the heel of one foot beside the big toe of the other one and try and hold that for 10 seconds. Real true tandem is where you put the heel of one foot in front of the other. This is what I was doing. And now all of a sudden the arms are out, my ankles are working like crazy. This is a very difficult balance exercise. And it usually makes people want to get their feet back apart where they feel more steady and balanced. Those are little balance exercises. Uh, those are standardized tests that uh, are done very often in doctor's offices and, and uh, medical professionals just to help someone understand whether they are at a risk for falling. So now we've talked about risks. Maybe you've identified some that you might have, but what can we do to try and not fall, prevent the fall? From, from the arthritis point of view and physiotherapy point of view, I've just broken it into three main subjects. Environment, posture, and exercise. I cannot stand here as a physiotherapist and not talk about exercise. Environment you will already know a lot about, and we mentioned a bit about it. Trying to make sure that, that everything in your home or in your office is free of objects on the floor, possible things you might trip on, that there's no water anywhere on the floor. And a lot of people tell me they learned the hard way about the importance of having night lights on at night. Posture especially when you're standing. Posture is very important when you're standing, also when you're sitting down, and even when you're sleeping. But you're safest from falls when you're sleeping. Um, having the right posture, it was once described to me that the ideal posture would be the sensation of hanging from the strings of a marionette. The strings are up there and they're pulling you up. And that is a feeling that I have found I can visualize in my mind. Something is pulling me up. It makes you taller. Your lungs will thank you because you're not pressing in on them by slouching. Makes you taller. Your shoulders will be back and you'll be standing over your feet. That's where you want to stand, over your feet. If you are practicing good posture, then you will be saving energy. And I think that's really important to know. And you will be taking some of the stress off of your back, for mostly off of your back. The main picture on this little uh, diagram is the, the person who's standing, facing us, and then standing to the side. And just to show that with good posture, arms by the side, her ears are lined up with her shoulders. We can imagine doing that. Lined up with the hips, 
lined up straight through the middle of the feet. If we were to slouch, all of a sudden, I can feel it, my weight is going through the front of my feet. But if I stand up tall, I'm steadier on my feet, and my muscles are at their most relaxed. I thought it was handy that they put sweatpants on with a stripe down the side because it shows the line of the posture. Now, exercise. There are some little mottos in our line of work. One that we use almost every day is move to improve. Move to improve. Motion is lotion for your joints. This is true. And recently someone said to me, you know, if you rest, you rust. I think it's true. <coughs> but imagine if we told you that exercise can do a lot of magical things. Exercise can help relieve pain, the pain of your arthritis, and this is true. Exercise can reduce stiffness from your arthritis, definitely build strength and exercise will help you become more fit. And the biggest one of all for falls, build your confidence and help you have a positive attitude. I think confidence is a huge part of exercise for people who have fallen. There are four main types, and we'll talk about these. Flexibility is movement of your joints. So you're, you're bending your knee up and down, you're straightening your knee, um, moving your ankles. Very important to keep those, keep those if you're doing ankle circles. Perfect. Strength is building up muscle power. And people use weights. People use elastic band. Elastic band is probably uh, my personal favorite. Endurance is that exercise that you're doing to help yourself move, to build your balance, but also to keep your heart strong. And for many years we thought, we, we can't ask people with arthritis to do fitness exercises, because the first thing in the back of my mind was jogging. And we, we, we really shy away from recommending exercise that requires impact on the joints. But we weren't thinking about all the endurance exercises that can be good, wonderful for arthritis. Right at the top of the list, I would say, you might be able to guess, water. Water exercise. This slide is in almost every presentation we do. Uh, Water will give you all the benefits that you want from exercise. Flexibility, strength, stamina. Did you know it's 12 times harder to walk through water than it is through air? But in the water, there won't be any, any weight on your knees and your hips because you'll be a bit floaty. So water, and on top of that, we have a pool here in town that is incredible in my opinion. What about group exercise? And one of the most famous groups we have around here is the VON, Smart Program of Exercise. It's a phone number that you dial and then they tell you where it's going on and it's everywhere. It's incredible. It's like the VON Smart Program to me has been like a snowball. Just, you know, it started, started and Took a while to recognize and now all of a sudden it's there. And most people I meet in the areas all around here, right up to Mount Forest and Drayton, it's going on everywhere. I couldn't recommend it more highly, especially as a group exercise. And everyone I've met has really looked forward to going. It's, it's, uh, and I understand they will even come to the home and help out there until you feel able. Endurance and strength, a few little pictures here. I know that uh, at the Senior Center in Fergus, there are people walking with poles, and I think they would teach as well how to use poles. I've known people who uh, wondered if they needed a walker 
but they got onto poles and found out that they didn't need a walker. They could use poles. Poles exercise every muscle from your neck down. Wonderful. If you are able to walk in the winter uh, and do group exercises with weights, it's all good. Now, um, just an, one last picture to show how important it is to exercise. I really believe pictures are worth a thousand words, so we wanted to find a few with exercise. I think if I haven't over-talked, would there be a, a chance to ask some questions or, or some comments? Um, we're always looking for comments because I think I counted 11 risk factors. I read through it, thought to myself, there will be some I missed. The question is um, about whether it might be a good idea or something, information about scraping the knee to remove arthritic tissue. And, and I believe that's an arthroscopic surgery. And there was a time when they did that quite a lot. But it was a few years ago when some research showed that, believe it or not, it wasn't making a huge difference to the long term. So people were undergoing general anesthetic um, off their feet for a while to get back in action. And what they did find, though, exercise. Exercise, building the muscle strength, keeping active. The research actually showed that that was better. And now I haven't met, I haven't met anyone recently who has been offered that. I do know that if someone tears a piece of tissue, like you've heard of cartilage injuries, they, they, they still do, they still will do arthroscopic surgery to remove loose pieces, significantly loose pieces of cartilage that may have been broken off, like the, the, the meniscus they call it, uh, but not to scrape, not to scrape, no. I'm glad you asked that. Exercise, yes. What, what would a, a person do if they had a fall, the, they fell on their knee, and afterwards there was significant pain, but that improved. However, there was water on the knee. And what, what would we suggest? Well, if the, if the pain has improved, uh, then we would try and address we would do an assessment, first of all, to see what the range of motion is like in the knee, what the strength is like, because many people who fall on the knee, have swelling in the knee, uh, develop some instability in the muscles of the knee. So we would definitely focus on strength, strengthening exercises, especially around the knee. For, for flexibility, we would talk about the water, of course. If someone, some people don't care to get in water, but many people do and just don't realize how beneficial it could be. Uh, also, we, at the same time, check the balance because there must have been a reason for that fall. And uh, we, we would check the balance and get into a really good history of what happened. Because listening to the story of the fall often gives a good clue as to why it happened. So the exercise, getting the story, and working really hard to help that person build confidence so that it would not happen again. Does that, does that help? Uh, yeah, that's great. Would, would you recommend the drainage of the water, or is that not a procedure? They, they, do, they do drain knees. It would depend, I think it would depend on pain. Because people who have swelling in the knee, right in the knee, often have a lot of pain. If there was just a little swelling still there, it, it probably isn't creating pain. And a little bit of swelling will often resolve on its own. Uh, there are things in the knee, that happen in the knee like baker's cysts. And there was a time when they just drained them. 
But now they don't. They, uh, they, they let that cyst resolve itself because it, it will. So a small amount of fluid will reabsorb into the body. If it's a large amount, there will be pain because the structures are being stressed around the knee and, and they will. They, they will take off fluid if there's an, a lot of it there. Are the medications for osteoarthritis the same as the ones for rheumatoid arthritis? They do overlap when it comes to pain. So I will meet people with both types of arthritis taking similar pain medications. Um, pain medications like Tylenol and Celebrex and all of those. But rheumatoid arthritis has another set of medications that have been discovered over the last the picture for people with rheumatoid arthritis has brightened immensely because of medications that they have discovered that have an effect on the immune system. It's an autoimmune disease and the medications are very effective but they're almost like a protocol now. Once uh, rheumatoid arthritis is diagnosed, the doctor wants, is hoping that their patient can take a, B, C, D medications, and they work. <clears throat> and can you name some of the... For rheumatoid arthritis? Well, the, the gold standard one at this time is methotrexate. And methotrexate is in a family of medications called disease-modifying medications, and there are a few others in that group. But methotrexate seems to be the one uh, that they start with. And then depending on how well that works, there, there is another family of medications called biologics. Mm -hmm. And many, many people are taking those as well. But the whole goal is to target the cells that are in the lining of the joint and shut them down. And that's what these medications do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> uh, you mentioned Baker's cysts before, and you said that they typically resolve themselves. What if it's taking uh, a really long time and we're not seeing any progress? What yeah. can you do for the Baker's cyst? For the Baker's cyst. And, and, and uh, yes, if a Baker's cyst is persistent, taking a long time to resolve, what, what can we do? Um, I generally have found that pain is an issue trying to find something that will help with the pain because uh, if the pain is severe enough then it's going to be blocking the knee from moving properly and it's going to be interrupting um, moving around. If they're not on something like, like over the shelf like Tylenol, we can talk about those things. Sometimes we talk about topicals topical rubs because there are a few out there that people use on their knees that can that can be helpful things like the Voltaren Emil gel and uh, capsaicin um, but it, it is hard I, I don't know the answer I know that I haven't met anyone with a Baker cyst in a very long time whose doctor wanted to aspirate it because it would come back it will come back. So they, they just really hope that it will absorb itself. Um, you don't want to get into things like knee wraps. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't probably suggest wrapping the knee because of the swelling at the back. It might make it feel uncomfortable. Um, yeah, it's a very difficult situation, but they, they, they do seem to resolve themselves. To, to find ways to stay active in the meantime, though, is really important. Mm -hmm. I have one more question. Yes. Um, well, uh, what would you say about glucosamine and helping um, uh, these um, Cora is Cora. Cora yes. Are you going to come to Cora's? Because glucosamine. Next. Okay. It's the next session. Oh. Cora's next. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> stay where you are. Um, Glucosamine is uh, the, the short, the, it, what do I think about glucosamine? Is it beneficial or is it helpful? <clears throat> and, and that's the million dollar question. Um, I, th I think the research is showing, and they are still doing research, that uh, the research is not supporting that glucosamine is making a difference to the cartilage. 
The hope in the beginning was that glucosamine might supplement cartilage because it's one of the components of cartilage. And they've studied it and studied it, and they, ha they haven't found that it is doing that. But what is it doing? Because many people take glucosamine, find they feel better, and, and then they say, well, how do I know if it's the glucosamine or not? And most of us would say, give yourself a little break from it. If you've been taking it for a while, stop taking it and see. And many, many people go back on. It's, it's, it's not a harmful medication. It's, um, it's more of a supplement, right? It's a supplement, yeah. yes, it's a supplement. And sometimes it comes with other ingredients, so I'm glad Cora is going to be here because it comes, sometimes you can get it with chondroitin, sometimes MSM, uh, and, and I don't know the ins and outs of that. But people are taking it. I don't know anyone who would discourage you from taking it because there is no harm. It's not going to do any harm, and people are talking about benefit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Susan, excellent presentation. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to ask a, a two-part question, though. What could someone expect if, if they came to you for an assessment or a visit? Mm -hmm. And then where can we access you? In, in okay. Thank you. Well, um, yes, the Arthritis Society, our local office is in Kitchener. How to, how to access me, if you're ever interested in, in meeting me one-to-one, -one, uh, I would welcome it. First of all, um, our local office is in Kitchener, but I have been so blessed to be able to uh, partner with this family health team, the Upper Grand family health team, and uh, the family health team in Drayton, as well as Palmerston and Mount Forest. So if you live in this area, uh, and you have a sense that you have arthritis, and any problems at all related to that arthritis, we would love to meet you. We can do one-to-one -one vi one -one visits. We would do a detailed assessment. And really, uh, we pride ourselves on listening. So we would, we would really listen to your story. And I can, I, can, I can pretty well promise that we might come up with something that would help. Uh, we are, I am part of the Arthritis Society that's called the Arthritis Rehabilitation and Education Program. And uh, we are physiotherapists and occupational therapists. We also have social workers. There is a, a website that you can look up information about the Arthritis Society, and there's an 800 number. And I was thinking I should have put that on my slides. And we could put that at the end of yes. the session too. Yes. Like okay. Slide. Okay. That would be great. So I could leave this. Yes. And also I brought a few of my cards. If anybody, um, they always give us like a thousand of these. So help yourself if you like. Uh, people are referred to us by family doctors, by rheumatologists, by themselves. So you can call the 800 number, tell them where you live, and they will find us. They'll, they'll find a place for you to visit the physiotherapist or the occupational therapist in your area. And then we can meet. I also have to say, I always forget, that um, we are very blessed as well to be covered by OHIP. So when people come to see us, there is no charge. and. Um, I think it's important to know that fewer and fewer things are covered by OHIP. So, good, good that you know that. And and uh, I don't. I think it's in here. There's no cost. It's on there. So I don't know if this could be incorporated into the. Okay, he's nodding. He can do it. I just want to thank everyone. Well, no, it's not oh, okay. <laughs> Listen, One more. Of course. Yeah, this, this was a. Fabulous. Oh, thank, I really and, and, appreciate and it. Very interesting, and it does thank open you. a lot of doors. I have a couple thank of you. questions. Yes. The first question is: Is carpal tunnel related to arthritis? Yes. And it can be. Yes. It can be. Mm -hmm. And the treatment for it, or 
Other carpal tunnel. Uh, well, yes, a lot. I've met more people lately trying the conservative treatment first. Uh, carpal tunnel. If uh, the question was, uh, how is surgery the only? Is it part of arthritis? Yes. And yes, and the answer is yes. Carpal tunnel is definitely part of arthritis. Uh, many people with inflammation in their wrist develop carpal tunnel. It's also related to many other things as well, like um, repetitive, repetitive work with your hands. Um, but the carpal tunnel is uh, literally a tunnel. I, I'm not sure if, if you know exactly where it is, but if you're looking at, at, your, at your hand, the carpal tunnel is right here. The carpals are bones that, that are rounded in shape like a semicircle, and they, they have a, a, a gully right here. And it's through that gully that all of the nerves come down to feed the feeling you have in your hand. The carpal tunnel is the nerves, particularly, that feed these fingers. So people will say, these fingers are tingly, these fingers are numb. And that's, uh, uh, um, that tells the doctor right away. It has, it should be, it'll be carpal tunnel. They won't just be sure until they make sure it's not coming from somewhere else, because nerves can come right from up here and into the hand. But there's a, a band of tendon ligament going across that tunnel that just holds the nerves as they go underneath and into the hand. If there's an injury to the wrist, swelling in the wrist, arthritis in the wrist, that tunnel can become narrow. And that puts pressure on the nerves. Also, if that tunnel is narrow and then you do this with your wrist, that adds pressure. Many people say the worst time they have is in the night. And they wake up and they shake and it goes away eventually. But that's because at night we often, we often sleep like this. And we don't know until this awful feeling in our hand wakes us up. That's another sign of carpal tunnel. So the treatment, the conservative treatment, is to uh, try and get rid of the swelling. So if there's, if there's any medication that the person could take to try to, to relieve the swelling. Also, to avoid letting the wrist get into this position. So wearing a brace. And most people particularly wear that brace at night. It has a, uh, it has a metal piece in it that will not allow your hand to do this. But your fingers are free. If you're up through the night, you can do anything, you know, you can move around. It doesn't keep you awake. It's, it's, uh, that's the conservative treatment. And then keeping your hand strong as well. The surgery, I, I, the surgery works. I haven't met anyone who was, who was sorry, but they probably got to a point where even wearing the splint wasn't working. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's good we have the surgery for those who need it, yeah. I, I wouldn't go right to it, though, as the first thing. Does that help at all? Well, yes, I mean. Well, thank you, Susan, for that fantastic presentation. If you would like more information on the Arthritis Society or the Arthritis Rehabilitation Education Program, just stay tuned to the end of the session and all of Susan's and the Arthritis Society's information will be displayed on the screen, as well as where you can find those free exercise classes in your community through VON. Our glory is not in never falling, it's in rising every time we do. It takes an entire community to prevent a fall. Thank you. For more information about the free, smart, gentle exercise programs in your area, check out the Vaughn Smart website at www.vonsmartexercise.com or contact Smart Program Coordinator Kelly G by phone 519-323-2330 extension 4954 or by email at kelly.gee at von.ca.
The preceding program was brought to you by Whiteman TV and Bruce Telecom.